Remember that we're trying to learn how to come up with our own resonance pushing arrows, and we want to make sure that we're drawing legal arrows. So for um, the most recent portion of the videos, we've been going over various rules that help you to make sure that you're drawing legal resonance arrows. Now, please remember that really by far the most important of those is how to avoid exceeding an octet. Remember that when you form a lone pair, you don't need to worry about exceeding an octet. But anytime you form a pi bond, you might be messing up and exceeding an octet. You're only allowed to form a new pi bond if you're doing it with a carbocation, or if you're doing it with an atom that's also losing a pi bond. So that's by far the most important rule that we've talked about uh, for making sure that you're drawing legal resonance structures. Uh, we're going to move on now to a, a slightly different topic, uh, but as usual, I want to encourage you not to move on unless you're sure you've mastered the previous material. Uh, so if you've been missing a lot of the previous examples or if there was stuff that was new to you in the previous examples, please go back and redo those examples until you have mastery. I particularly strongly encourage you to make sure that you've mastered this idea uh, about pi bonds. Make sure that you're very comfortable with quickly deciding when you've exceeded an octet. Uh, so this uh, idea that um, you can only form a new pi bond with a carbocation or with an atom that's losing a pi bond. Make sure you've mastered that idea before you move on to the next portion of the videos. If necessary, redo the portion of the videos where we covered this material on forming new pi bonds. Now we're going to move forward. So again, what we've finished doing is we've learned how to make sure that your uh, electron pushing arrows are legal. But if you think back to the beginning uh, and the introduction of this series of videos, I mentioned that we not only want to draw the legal resonance structures, but we also want to just draw the structures that have some significance. Now, they don't have to all be equally significant. It's okay to draw less significant resonance structures, but we want to avoid drawing resonance structures that are really completely insignificant. So at the beginning of this series of videos, we mentioned that there are some resonance structures which are technically legal, but are so very insignificant that it's a waste of time and just confusing to draw them in the first place. So now what we want to do is go over a couple of rules or maybe just rules of thumb that help you to avoid wasting your time on completely insignificant uh, resonance structures. Well, the first rule we're going to see here is that you should generally avoid having more than two charges in your molecule. You should generally avoid having more than two charges in your resonance structure. Or another way of putting that is you should avoid having three or more charges. Generally speaking, any resonance structure with three or more charges is so insignificant it wasn't worth drawing in the first place. Generally speaking, as a rule of thumb, any resonance structure with three or more charges is so insignificant there's no point in drawing it. Uh, in general, I hope that you understand that nature doesn't like charges. Nature hates charges. Charges make resonance structures uh, less significant. Um, the best resonance structures are the ones that avoid charges. Now, it's okay to have two or fewer charges in many situations. Remember, we're not trying to draw only the most significant resonance structures. Usually the most significant resonance structures have uh, maybe no charges at all, um, but it's okay to also draw the resonance structures with just one or two charges. Those can have a fair amount of significance as well. But any resonance structure with three or more charges is generally going to be so insignificant that we shouldn't really bother drawing it in the first place. Uh, I want to emphasize that this is just a rule of thumb. Um, th there are some exceptions to this. Uh, maybe one exception that's uh, worth mentioning is the nitro group. Uh, here I have a nitro group. Nitro group is NO2 and then something else down here. Notice that a nitro group already starts with two charges. And if you tinker around, you'll see there's no way to get rid of these two charges. A nitro group has already got two charges and there's no way to get rid of them. The net charge is zero, but there's no way to avoid having a positive formal charge and a negative formal charge. Well, it's not too surprising since we always have at least two charges, it's not too surprising that sometimes we actually end up with three charges around the nitro group. So um, if you end up with three charges around a nitro group, we shouldn't worry about that. That, that can be okay. Uh, but that, that's a pretty rare exception to what we've been talking about. Generally speaking, 
you want to avoid having three or more charges. So let's determine whether this is going to give us a significant resonance structure. As usual, I hope that after every question or problem that I pose, you're pausing the video and giving the problem some thought before you proceed with the video. Well, uh, how many charges is this going to give us? At this point, I hope that you're adept enough to see how many charges there will be even without drawing the new resonance structure. Um, so this is at the tail, it is going to get a positive charge, and this is at the head, it's going to get a negative charge. So we're going to end up with a positive and a negative charge. That's okay, that's only two charges. Two charges can be okay. We really want to avoid three or more charges. So this could give us a significant resonance structure. This is worth drawing, so this is okay. Just uh, to make that crystal clear. Here's how you would draw the resonance structures. At the tail, you erase the pi bond. And this is at the initial tail, so it gets a positive charge. And then at the head, you would form a new lone pair. We don't draw the lone pair, but because this is at the head, it gets more negative. So this is the resonance structure indicated by this arrow. And as we already said, it has two charges. Well, we're not jumping for joy about that, uh, but two charges can, in certain circumstances can be uh, significant enough to be worth drawing. Uh, so, so this is okay. Uh, now I hope that you could see that we were going to get two charges even without drawing this resonance structure. I hope that you've had enough practice with electron pushing arrows now that you could see at a glance that we were going to get a positive charge here and a negative charge here. And that would be only two charges, which is, which is okay. How about this? Uh, is this going to give us a significant resonance structure? I hope you gave that a shot. Um, and you should be able to see, even without drawing the new resonance structure, that this is going to give us two more charges. We're going to end up with a positive charge at this carbon and a negative charge at this oxygen. But we already started with a negative charge here. So we're going to end up with three charges. Well, that's almost never significant. Uh, so this is not going to give us a significant uh, resonance structure. It's not worth our while to even draw this arrow and to even try to get this resonance structure. So this is a good example of a arrow which is not worth drawing. This is legal, but it's not going to give us a resonance structure that's of any significance. It's going to have so many charges, three charges, that it's going to play very little role in determining the properties of the molecule. Okay, so again, this is one that you should indicate as a bad, non-useful arrow, because it's going to give you three charges. I hope you can see just by looking at it, it's going to give you three charges. But just to be crystal clear, Let's use the modify and redraw technique to show what we're going to get here. This tail indicates that we're erasing the pi bond, and it's an initial tail, so we make this carbon more positive. This head indicates we're forming a lone pair. Uh, we don't draw the lone pair, but because that's the final head, we put a new charge in there. And then, just as I promised, now we've ended up with three charges total. Two new charges and the charge we started with. Well, any resonance, well, not any, but almost always a resonance structure with three charges is so insignificant, it's not worth drawing in the first place. So again, this is not really worth drawing in the first place. This is not a useful arrow. And again, I hope that you've gotten to the point where you can see that this is going to give us two, two new charges and three charges total, even without having to draw this new resonance structure. Uh, as long as we've drawn this, we might as well be systematic and always check the net charge. The net charge over here is negative one, and the net charge over here is negative one, plus one, negative one. So this also has a, a net charge of negative one. So this is a totally a legal transition. It's just so insignificant that it's not worth drawing. Uh, so I hope you can compare this situation with this situation up here, because these are very similar it's perfectly fine to move this pi bond onto the oxygen because we only end up with two charges. Two charges can be okay. But here, it's not worth our while to move the pi bond onto the oxygen because then we end up with three charges. Three charges is almost never worth drawing. 